It's that time of year, the, the end. It's the end of it. So as usual, we wanna round up our favorite games to play on Xbox. Now, to round out this list and keep it balanced, we are including games that are exclusive to Xbox as well as PC. That's a hot topic that gets people a little jammed up, but it's how we get a solid, thorough list of games exclusive to this platform. Also, we have done this for our PS4 exclusives video too, to keep it balanced, so don't freak out. And remember, this is the GameRex team's personal choices. Yours should differ. Let us know in the comments. But let's get started. Starting off with number 10, we have Hello Neighbor. It's a horror stealth game that has you trying to sneak into your neighbor's house to find out what he's hiding in the basement. It's really weird and unique, trust me. The game has a sandbox style gameplay and there are numerous ways to break into your neighbor's house and then make your way down into the basement. But you have to be careful because your neighbor will be hunting you down the entire time and his AI will evolve and learn from certain things you do and will start to counter you. He'll set up traps, cameras, and even block out hallways with furniture to stop you. The game doesn't look scary. It has cartoony, goofy graphics, but it's actually really creepy. There's some intense moments. We were really surprised how creepy this game can be when your neighbor catches you. It's so instant and he can come out of nowhere and it'll definitely have you jumping out of your chair. It's a good time. And at number nine, speaking of smaller games, we have Candleman. It's this cool little ID at Xbox indie title where you play as a candle. It's a 3D platformer focusing on a little action adventure and the mechanics embrace light and shadow and the fact that you're just a little candle that'll burn out quickly. It's surprisingly interesting and can get it a little bit challenging here and there with some solid platforming, although it is a little simplistic, but it also looks and sounds great. So if you're looking for a fun little adventure to play through, keep this one in mind. We figured it was good to put this on the list because it's been overlooked everywhere. But at number eight, we have Voodoo Vince Remastered and Phantom Dust Remastered. We didn't want to clog up this list with remasters, but we thought these were worth bringing up, especially because Xbox didn't have a ton of games this year. But these are remasters of good games. First, Voodoo Vince was an oddly requested original Xbox cult hit. It's like an action platformer that's fairly simple, but it has a good amount of weird New Orleans jazzy style to it. And on the other hand, Phantom Dust is the same thing, really. It was this weird, oddly specific cult hit original Xbox game with really interesting combat and a kind of anime style. Both of these games, though, are like a time warp from the early 2000s, and since they're remastered, they're really the best way to play. And if you're a younger Xbox player, this is a really good way to kind of take a little bit of a look back on its history, you know? Next at number seven, we have Pit People. This is another Xbox PC game that may have slipped by on your radar. Most importantly, it's from Behemoth, the guys behind the amazing stuff like Castle Crashers. This game released early this year, but it's still very much being updated and worked on, and it's just good, simple, addictive fun. It's partly a fast-paced turn-based adventure game with a tile map and lots of things to do. There's exploration, loot, customization, fighting in tournaments, stuff like that. But then it also has solid two-player co-op online and offline at 4v4 PvP, and it just has that weird goofy style that Behemoth games are known for. And at number six, we have Tacoma. This is a game from Fulbright, the people behind Gone Home. Now, I know for many of you, that's like an instant turnoff, but for me, even as a fan of Gone Home, Tacoma left me a little disappointed, I'm not gonna lie. I just didn't find the story very interesting. But on the positive sides, you do get fairly interesting characters with great voice acting, focusing around all these people working on a space station in the future. The way it goes down, it's up to you to put the pieces together through augmented reality recordings of the workers to figure out what happened here. It's a weird, low only space adventure game that feels kind of old school, but also looks and sounds really nice and slick. Even though I ultimately didn't care where it went, gamers who are really into story experiences might find some stuff to like with this one. Now next at number five, we have Super Lucky's Tale. Here's just a good old fashioned fun platformer. It is heavily focused towards kids though, keep in mind. The character Lucky doesn't really have much. He's just cute and playful, that's it. This was a world and character that debuted on Oculus Rift, but got another lease on life with this Xbox game this year with this whole new game. The world and colors are incredibly crisp and sharp and YouTube videos don't do it justice. This game looks really, really great in motion. It's simple and mostly a cakewalk, but it just, it wears that platformer pride on its sleeve and you gotta give them credit for that. Now at number four, we have Halo Wars 2. It does something really great and that's making an RTS actually enjoyable to play on console just as Halo Wars 1 did before it. Now, not only that, it's also got a pretty interesting story for Halo fans, so long as you're into 343's take on the lore. But along with that, it's also designed in part by Creative Assembly, the guys behind the Total War series, so you know they know what they're doing. But it's still not the most complicated RTS, but it's still way more dense than the original Halo Wars and tons of fun, especially 
especially in multiplayer where things can get really, really hectic. It's incredibly well designed for easy console play with controls that navigate everything really well. I did a before you buy on this when the game originally released, and although it wasn't perfect, it is one of the Xbox exclusives this year that I really look back on fondly. Now at number three, we have Forza Motorsport 7. Forza 7 feels like an update, but it's a damn good one. You get a couple of new maps and cars, a bit of a retuned system of progression and a way of collecting cars, and a cool dynamic weather system that makes driving a bit more unpredictable on certain maps. It'll instantly start raining, and then you have to deal with raining conditions, and then it'll clear up, and you still have to maybe dodge puddles while the sun is in your eyes. It's just a good little way to shake up the racing. Plus, the game still gives you tons of customization options for your car and how you want to play. Forza 7 really finds a perfect line between hardcore simulation and having some fun factor like the Forza Horizon games. There's enough race and tournament varieties to satisfy lovers of all different types of like race cars, classic cars, and even trucks and semi-trucks. Also, the game looks and runs incredibly well, and it's probably one of the best looking Xbox One games right now, especially on Xbox One X. Now at number two, we have Player Unknown's Battlegrounds. This is a game that is very much a big PC game, but as of right now, its console exclusive is Xbox One. By now, I'm sure you probably know what PUBG really is. You know, it was a surprise hit that took the world by storm. And now even more players are gonna be able to murder each other with frying pans with no pants on. If this for some reason is the first time you're hearing about the game though, or you just never got a grasp on what exactly it is, it's kind of like Hunger Games, the video game. Up to a hundred players parachute onto a huge island, scour the area, for weapons and then proceed to just murder each other until there's only one player left. Now, there's a lot of people that like to hate on this game, but I think it's just because they never really tried it because it doesn't look like much, but it's really addictive and surprisingly tactical, but also surprisingly weird and crazy. Every minute you spend alive is just such an adrenaline rush. And if you've played it before, you know exactly why it's so fun. Just the act of walking into a house is terrifying because you don't know if there's someone else there on the other side of the door with a shotgun pointed right at your face. It's really tense and it's dropping in December for Xbox One, so we, we really hope it's as good as it is on the PC. But at number one, our favorite Xbox One game of the year, it's Cuphead. I mean, come on, Cuphead is really good. It was like the surprise hit of the year. I think a lot of people didn't see it coming, but it's just a really fun action platformer with a really good twist on animation because it's all hand-drawn and hand watercolor painted with orchestrated music, all kind of reminiscent of the 1930s animation styles. But even though the aesthetic is all great, it has to be a good game. And thankfully Cuphead definitely knocks it out of the park. Right now it's only local co-op but that's how you have to play it because it is a ton of fun and you're gonna be yelling at your friends. You've probably also heard this, but it's incredibly challenging and it feels surprisingly old school. It's a really good fresh spin on that old school shoot 'em up formula. And if you haven't played it, even if you're scared of hearing about the challenge, I still recommend checking it out because it is worth working through just because you get to see all this really cool art and all these amazing hand-drawn bosses that really come to life. And then they also kick your ass. But we absolutely love playing it. We think it's one of the best things to play on Xbox right now. So that's why it's our number one. But we also have some bonus games, uh, kind of weird little games that fell under the radar, like Rivals of Ether. It was a PC game, and now it has console exclusivity on Xbox One that released this year. Same with Path of Exile. Also the same with the very fun Slime Rancher. And of course it released this year, so it's worth pointing out the only place you could play Fallout Shelter on console is on Xbox One. So those are the Xbox One games of this year that are pretty much exclusive to the console that we think are generally worth checking out. You know, there's been a lot of cancellations and even Gigantic we wanted to put on the list, but that game is getting eventually shut down. And of course, if you are an Xbox fan and you're not a big fan of this list, there's still at least a lot of games releasing next year, right? But regardless, we want to hear from you guys down in the comments what you're playing on Xbox One. Let us know your top five or your top. And you know, coming around here and clicking the like button does help us out. And if you're new, you should subscribe because we put out stuff every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time.